Hi you guys, this is Sue, the Esoteric Empress, and today I am talking about the Bible. I'm going to be talking about Psalms 23 today, as it applies to our everyday life, as it applies to the Law of Attraction, in terms of our creating abundance for ourselves um, in our everyday lives. Deliberate creation, basically. And so... The 23rd Psalm for me was something very important growing up. Like, I actually know it by head. I <laughs> knew it from I was a kid. I know many children know it who, you know, are in school and stuff like that. It was just something people being of the Christian faith know that that's a very powerful Psalm. Psalm 23rd, Psalm 27, like 91st Psalm, 1st Psalms, Psalm 65. But today I'm focusing on Psalm 23 because that Psalm is, is something that is powerful in that it is King David, you know, like David and Goliath, King David was a king at that point, but King David was also a shepherd in his younger years. So King David in the 23rd Psalm and actually the book of Psalms written by David is expressing his feelings about not only God but to about himself to God and through God so I'm looking at it as a, the pointless what we when we pray a lot of the times we disconnect ourselves when we pray we are like we're praying to a God in the sky something or a being that is separate from us, which is not true. And David is speaking about himself, about God, through himself, the God that is already within him, that he's aware of, that he knows is, is him, you know? And for me, Psalms was powerful. Psalm still is powerful, the 23rd Psalm, a lot of the Psalms actually, because my relationship with my dad, my earthly father, it was really almost non-existent. And so for me, feeling that I have a real father that I can call upon whenever I need him is just magnificent <laughs> because that is what the divine father wants us to do wants us to know that we can call upon him when we are whether when we are in, in need whether we are just giving thanksgiving whatever state we are in we are connected we can be more connected and in tune with the divine within us and the divine itself so today the 23rd psalm is actually being applied to real life now today as it is in terms of law of attraction deliberate creation abundance prosperity wealth all of that stuff that i talk about i am going to talk about the spiritual and biblical aspect of it today now yes i do believe in magic that's why i consider myself the esoteric empress esoteric meaning meaning something that is not generally known something that is just a, a few people have applied it to their lives and you know are kind of not really I wouldn't consider myself an expert but like I feel like I am well knowledge knowledgeable in a lot of metaphysical things so when I look at the law of attraction as it relates to spirituality, I totally believe in it. I believe that it is through our minds that magic happens. It is through our intent, what we send forth, our energy, that things happen and that the divine has given that, that given us that same power that he has to be able to make things happen, to create things, co-creating with the divine. Mother and father, father and mother. <laughs> So today I'm going to talk about the Psalms and going into a little detail. I don't want the video to be too long, but I have decided I'm going to detail it a little. So I, I am actually going to read out of this 
what is this which version is this i covered my bible <laughs> so i can't really see i'm going to go to the front page and see what version this is this is new international version okay i like king james version but this is one that i got from my church next door and so we're going to use this today the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Now, in the King James Version, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. A lot of people, just from this beginning scripture, verse of the scripture, verse 1, I, I, people have confused that. People say, well, oh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, meaning that Okay, now, the Lord is my shepherd, but he gives me everything already. I should, not, I should not want, and this is where the confusion comes in, because you feel like you should not be wanting things. You feel like something is wrong with you for having needs and for saying, oh, I need this, I want this. Like, oh, older people will tell you, oh, life is not about that, you know. You are already rich. You are, you know. Be humble, sit low, <laughs> relax, do without, suffer. In other words, that is the kind of mental connotation they attach to it. Like, and it's that is, is not what it means. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. I believe that means the Lord is my shepherd, my needs are already met. I have no wants. Everything that I want is here for me, is provided for me, is promised to me. Think of now God being as <clears throat> your father. There are children, you are a child of someone, you have parents, and when you look at it, a child really demands things. A child doesn't really, you know, sit down and cower in fear and like beg and try to petition and plead for stuff like they do a lot of times when they know it's like frivolous toys or something like that but in general the things that they know they need the things that they really want that they see everybody else has they want to you know they want it they're like oh well daddy i want this i they don't really like you know sit back and like um i'm not sure i want it i might like you could you think you'll be able to get that for me like no kids are bold <laughs> when it comes to their parents they know that their parents will try their best to provide in most cases for them what the things that they desire so the same thing applies to us as adults like and looking at it from the spiritual realm from a spiritual standpoint we should be able to have that boldness as well when it comes to the things that we desire in life because I don't believe that you are put here to suffer. You are not put here to have hardship and to feel pain and to like wait until you die to enjoy anything in life. People who have prosperity, who are successful financially and stuff like that, some of them have even struggled because they feel like they feel guilty because they have and other people around them don't have so much like it makes them kind of cower like oh my goodness like I'm afraid of blessings which makes no sense it's not to say you should be you know boastful and braggadocious and show off all over the place but you should definitely enjoy the blessings that are bestowed bestowed by the divine now Back to the Psalms, Psalms 23, this is now verse 2. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Now David, as being a shepherd in his past, David is referring now to sheep. He was referring to the thing that he is most knowledgeable about in life is caring for sheep so this is why the prayer i think is says so powerful because it's something that really was resonating with his soul something with that is 
in his history, something that is ingrained in his youth, being a shepherd. And so it's much easier for him to express himself speaking from that, from that perspective of being a sheep, being shepherded. So he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul is verse three. Life is tiring, life is arduous, life is challenging a lot of times. Just sometimes just to make a simple errand is a little stressful. So being the shepherd, the Lord, David speaks of, is giving him comfort in his hardship, giving him some way to rest, like getting him out of the scorching sun and like cooling him off, giving him peace and tranquility amid, amidst all the crap that's going on in the world <laughs> around you. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. This is the rest of verse 3. For his name's sake, does he guide him along the right paths? It is it is obviously now telling you at that point that it is up to the divine who guides him daily and like keeps him, steers him in the right direction as he does us. And it is all for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This is important because I had to do a little research. I was looking at a couple other videos um, on this on this actual psalm, and I walk through the valley, the darkest valley, but I will fear no evil because you are with me that's comforting alone like to know that there is a presence there is always that that spirit that lives within you that could you can connect with and know that you are safe your rod and your staff they comfort me this was something that i actually came upon in doing my little research on the psalms and the rod and staff as like i said the story being in reference from a uh, perspective of being a shepherd the rod of course represents him protecting the sheep him protecting his sheep god protecting his sheep so the rod was used to ward off offenders ward off attackers ward off the enemy basically and the staff represented like the family line the the status of the family, the history of the family. They were ingrained with stories of things that occurred, significant things that took place within their generations on that staff and they were handed down generations to generation. And it, so it was very, it was a very important, important tool to a family in ancient times. So the rod, represented the protection from the enemy and the staff represented the knowingness the knowledge the wisdom of the ages basically of the generations that they have lived through so now the rod actually the enemy sorry the enemy actually not so much being people because this was something that it was a little light bulb moment for me because the the enemy even though we think of it as you definitely going to think about people when you hear the word enemy, but in this particular story, in this particular prayer, in this particular case, the enemy definitely was not people. The enemy was, were animals, big animals, because, you know, sheep are attacked by some pretty ferocious animals. So, and of course, this is a long time ago, so we have some big bears and things like that that may have been attacking would, would attack a sheep <laughs> so a herd of sheep so 
that is what he meant, the rod and the staff, they comfort him. Because now when you think about the enemy, the enemy also for us now, not being sheep, we're not worrying about animals so much, but we're worrying about the actual enemy, the enemy being the actual opposing force to all that is good, which in this case, in, in the Christian sense is the devil and his minions, the devil and his all of his evil entities that he allows to go and do his work for him through people. And this is where it's also tricky because people, we hold grudges and we get so like, you know, caught up on hatred and violence and stuff like that against each other because we feel like someone has wronged us so horribly. But you have to understand the only thing that allows us to free ourselves from that burden of hatred is to actually understand that it's really the powers and principalities that you're fighting against, not so much the person, the people themselves. It is the actual forces that you cannot see with your bare eyes. They are that are influencing people to do these malicious things to each other. That's the one thing you can do to help you to forgive is to understand that people act out of things that took place long time ago a long time ago in their past and take it out on people, other people, hurt people, hurt people. So the rod and the staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. This is now verse five. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. You know, to be anointed means that you are blessed, means that you've been chosen. You've been, you know, you are like a part of that covenant now you are like one of them so to be anointed me is a very important thing to think about and to understand as it applies to yourself you are anointed you've chosen the path to follow in righteousness you are anointed your, your cup overflows with blessings cup overflows you will see the cup is half empty it's always overflowing Surely, verse 6, surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Well, in this one, it says, surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So your goodness and mercy following me all the days of my life. That is meaning now, the goodness and mercy is not going to come when... I die. The goodness and mercy is in the here and now. All we ever have is the here and now. And so for the goodness and mercy to come to you will follow me. It will follow me. It doesn't just come to you. It follows you <laughs> all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The goodness and mercy, it is actually pursuing you. It is actually behind you. And one time when I used to go to a church close by me, that is something that the Reverend said. He was like, you know, the blessings are like, you know, running me down. Like they are in hot pursuit. <laughs> and this is the way we have to think. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever it means that it is here and now that you're making the changes to your mindset. You're making the magic begin up here as above, so below. And this is the magic of our minds as well. The magic is for you to begin to understand these principles and apply them to your life today, not when you get old, not when you get like a little monetary gain or something, you're like, oh, I'm going to like be more spiritual when I am more comfortable or something. That's not how, the way it works. It's, a, it's for you to understand these principles today and apply them to your life. And you can't be afraid, you can't be afraid of asking the divine for what you want. You can't be afraid of prayer. You can't be afraid. Prayer actually is a way you're connecting. You're connecting with the God within yourself, the God and goddess within yourself. Prayer is your way of actually talking and like programming your subconscious. Prayer is, prayer is 
you're not beckoning for something from some other force to give you something like please i'll just do this if you only like give me this no it is the connection that you already have you can't see it to the all that is to omniscience to omnipotence to all of that the good stuff all the good stuff the good stuff trust me our father wants only good for us no father wants us to suffer and to be in pain this is what we have to get out of thinking we can't be afraid to ask for what we want even in prayer we have to get like down and dirty and tell god the things of our heart he's he knows them already but we have to actually connect become one and we have to remember when we get the things that money we don't serve the things we don't serve money we don't you know that is the evidence of the connection that we have with our father that is the connection that is the evidence of the connection it is showing the, the awesomeness and the wonderful magnificence of the all that is that we should be able to, 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 to show and be the same way we're not pompous we're not greedy we're not you know we're doing it out of love love in the name of love in the name of good health in the name of all that is good success well-being prosperity happiness joy peace like you tell yourself you don't get sick gods gods and goddesses don't get sick like and this is amazing for me because i've been like i don't know it was a couple of videos i did before this one but in it i had i was just recovering from a flu and oh i felt so awful and i was like oh my gosh like this thing is like really and i look back that i look back at that now and it's really weird because like my husband like every time we <laughs> We get sick, I get sick, then my daughter gets sick, then my son starts sniffling, and then it's like, oh boy, the whole house is going down, and like, he's like, anyhow, see you later, go to work, bye, love you. <laughs> and we're like, well, we don't want you to get sick, so just make sure I don't, you know, drink out of that cup, or don't, whatever. And he's like, you know, that's okay, like, I'm not, I don't get sick. And at first, I'm like, the audacity of this man. <laughs> Here we are, like dying, <laughs> feeling like we're gonna die. And he's like all jolly with a drink in his hand. And he's like, you know, I don't get sick. Like, you know, I'll be okay. But yeah, just don't cough on my pillow or whatever. And, but this is the message, the message in the, in the closing of this video. That's the message that I want to send out. We have to say, we have to speak like we're rich, like we are sons of God. And daughters we have to act like we are we have to dress like we are we have to behave like we are we have to believe that we are and guess what you're because you're representing what are you representing you know you're not just representing yourself you're representing the all that is that the good the all good <laughs> that is and you got to tell yourself you're rich because you are richness is not just in money richness is in so many good things like you know and you are that which you say you are so say you're rich you have your 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 the universe is on your side and always remember that and with that I want to just close with that remember to tell yourself good things because what you say about yourself is what really matters what you say about yourself to yourself is what matters and the psalm today is something that i want you to remember because it is what you what you tell yourself that's gonna actually manifest and i thought this was a good example for us to look at today i'm gonna do another video i want to talk about some actually other psalms that i like and that are like just as powerful as this one in manifesting your abundance and bringing your life full circle in happiness and light so thanks guys for watching and i hope this wasn't too long but i'm sure it was for good reason so until i do my next video i would say peace love and blessed be